Hello, thank you for joining me today. We're going to look at uh, some of the problems that we have in prayer, certainly the, some of the problems I've had in prayer. So I want to share a few things along these sort of lines for you. Um, I answer prayer. Um, I know there was a time in my life when I really struggled with this particular problem in prayer, um, praying when life was going badly, when things weren't working out for me, um, when the problem wouldn't go away. And I felt that I wasn't getting an answer from God. Um, I remember getting getting down and depressed about it. How about you? You have had that experience? And what if we pray, but things still don't go our way? How do we manage? How do we keep going in prayer? And do um, unanswered prayers discourage and defeat us? That's a few things we're going to look at very briefly in the next few moments. So praying when things don't go away is hard. Um, and maybe maybe you felt let down in different ways. Maybe you've lost a job, a precious job. Maybe a friend has uh, let you down in some way or rejected you. Maybe you've got financial problems. Maybe uh, a, a romantic relationship's gone sour or your health is failing or someone you love, their health is in problems. You've got problems with their health. How does our faith fare in times like this? How do we feel? when our prayers don't seem to be answered. How do we keep going? Well, someone a few days ago asked me how I cope with everything that's gone on, particularly through the pandemic and other problems. And I told him about a story that really helps me when I feel myself falling into depression or overwhelmed with, with problems or feeling that God's not there and not answering prayer. Um, I don't know if you know the story, the story of Jesus in the storm. You know, Jesus, uh, it, it, according to what the Bible tells us, the disciples were in a boat and Jesus was in that boat too. But he was asleep and a fierce storm came up and they said that they turned to each other and said, does he care? They said to Jesus, do you care? Don't you not care about us? And they were his closest friends and followers and they were doubting. Then suddenly they became absolutely amazed at, amazed at what he did. He calmed the wind and the waves. And they were amazed, but not only were they amazed at what he did to the um, to, to the weather and stuff, they, they, they realised that he did care and that he had a power um, to protect them. And I wonder whether that's uh, something that's going on inside us when we don't get these answered prayer, that we, we sort of feel that somehow um, God doesn't really care for us and that we're not really protected, we're not really safe. In this very um, troublesome and dangerous world, sometimes we feel we're threatened by this world around us, aren't we, by things that can go wrong. You know, when, when I find prayer is hard, it's um, often because I'm upset because um, of those things, that, I'm, that something's happened, some circumstance, uh, and, and it feels that life's unfair. And I feel God's let me down. How about you? Do you get like that as well? And prayer becomes then very problematic. Um, but when I remember that Jesus was in the boat and he did calm the storm and, and for, you know, that like those, those disciples, those followers, that... that they said that he didn't care. Well, maybe I've got my feelings wrong. Maybe I've got it all wrong when, I, when I'm in prayer and I'm thinking that and I'm not getting the answers. Maybe maybe God does care. He's just not not doing things in the, in the timing that I want. He's not doing them instantly. We live in this very instant gratification culture, don't we? Maybe God's not fitting into that. Um, sometimes there's that, there's that sense of perseverance hanging in there and waiting for God's timing. Um, and you know, we, otherwise we get it becomes all a barrier. It's all about a relationship. Prayer is with God, and if we if we doubt Him, if we don't trust Him, if we don't think He's all powerful, then that becomes a real barrier and undermines our faith. I mean, looking in the Bible, there's many examples of unanswered prayer, um, and other times when prayers do get answered. And I mean, you can't always fathom what's going on here, but we need to believe that God is bigger. Than, than our brains are, than what we can understand, and that he has some sort of plan he's working to. I mean, there's a good example um, of the Apostle Paul, um, the, 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 the great missionary man who was an incredible guy, but he, he prayed and he got so many answers to prayer, but there was this particular prayer that he prayed. He calls it his thorn in the flesh, some sort of, could have been an illness, it could have been some disability. Um, he asked God to take it away many times, but God didn't take it away. And yet he was able to turn that around and say, well, hang on, what is God teaching me through this um, unanswered prayer? What is he teaching me through this difficulty I'm going through? Um, so rather than trying to push the circumstances away and trying to change them, 
How are those circumstances changing me? What is God doing in me through this difficult time? When I've started to think that way, it's revolutionized my prayer. And, and I, I can even start to thank God for not answering prayer because I can see that he's doing something new in me. He's started changing my character. He's building something Christ-like in me, turning me more into a better person because I'm such an imperfect person. Um, but God's starting to change me and make me a better person. Um, I remember when someone said to me once that I, I, I do suffer from depression um, from time to time. And I was going through a bad depression at that time. And if you've ever been through depression, it's such a it takes sucks, sucks all your all, all the all your energy. It sucks uh, your hope. It sucks everything, it makes everything black. Um, I think Winston Church, you call it the black dog. It's like something sitting over you. And, and this this person said to me, you know, why don't I thank God for my depression? And I felt really resentful at first. How can I thank him for something like that? But as I as I offered it to God and I started to to pray about it and I and I built on this relationship I had with him, I realized that um, I could thank him for it because it made me that depression made me realize my weakness and my need of God and made prayer so much more powerful. Uh, and it's funny thing. The weird thing was, as I started to accept my depression, I started to get better. Um, it was amazing. Um, and I think that's often the case with, with prayer is that as we start to come to terms with God, his power, that he cares for us, and but his timing is different and everything happens for a good purpose um, somehow, though it may not be good in the immediate short term and it may not be good things, but there's some good that God can build in us from it. And maybe it's resilience. Maybe it's changing our personality in some way to a better personality. I don't know. But, uh, you know, if we can take that sort of change of attitude, that can make such a difference. Um, I mean, and looking at circumstances uh, and thinking that life should always be easy, which is often what our culture wants us to think, um, really does um, does make us find difficulty very, very much harder. And it's not a Christian way of thinking. Um, and it doesn't really help us. Um, if we focus around the things around us rather than focus on our relationship with God, that doesn't help us either. Um, the most precious thing and the one thing that God promises he will uphold is his, his relationship with us. He will uphold his side. So let's be careful that we uphold our side of the relationship and don't let things come between us. Circumstances come between us and God. I mean, can we can we get to that point that we do not simply know why some prayers are answered? Can we just can we just rest in that and just trust God with it? And, and if not, if, if we don't get answered unanswered prayers, I mean, some of you think we shouldn't pray at all but we're missing the point because prayer is not about results prayer is not some celestial slot machine we put in and expect to get something out it's about a relationship we pray to god because he's our father he's a heavenly father who's a good father even if we've had bad fathers on this earth or no father he is a good father who wants to help us and support us and give us good gifts so the more we believe that and trust in that the revolution that will happen in our prayer is amazing so I wish you well with your prayer. And I'll, let me pray for you now. Dear Lord, we thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, that you are a good father, that you are a caring father, that you are a father who wants to give good gifts to his children if we trust you. Father, thank you that prayer is all about our relationship with you. It's not about the things we get or the answers we get so much, though you do give us things, you do give us answers so many, many times. Um, and many of us have been through such a difficult time over the last year, um, maybe even especially over the last few months during the last lockdown. Um, and it's been so hard. Um, Lord, we do pray that you'd help us um, to keep trusting you, to keep praying. Even if we've not had the answers we want from prayer, we pray that we would trust you with that and see what it's doing to change us, Lord, some of these difficulties we've gone through. Give us that reassurance and strength that we need um, to put our trust in you and to know the storm will still soon ease and things will get better. But I do pray for all those particularly who are struggling at the moment, feeling life is against them, are isolated and cut off. Lord, thank you for all those who are, have, have done so much, Lord, in this time um, with difficulty over the last year. Those who have volunteered, those who have given so much of, uh, of themselves to others uh, to support them. Those who are more difficult, in difficulty, those who have been vulnerable, isolated. Father, we thank you particularly for all the volunteers, Lord, that have helped people. Um, and really done so much, um, especially for some of the local charities, Father, and um, obviously the emergency services too. Father, so many uh, good things have been done by, by people serving one another. We just thank you for that. And we do pray particularly for the work of Leighton Lindsley Helpers, the practical support of all the volunteers, and for all those who have made phone calls and 
and done other things to help reduce the isolation. And all the leaders and all those in, who are in charge there, Lord, protect them and watch over them, give them strength to carry on. Bless all those who give their time to help others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.